Hello there! If you are using your Quest 2 for more than 2 hours per session, this video is for you. Usually Quest 2 can give us 2 hours of battery life without charging, sometimes even less if we use a wireless streaming and 120Hz refresh rate. Unfortunately, the default charger with a short cable is not enough to charge and play at the same time. But don't worry, it is possible, just follow the steps in this video. According to the information on the device, Quest 2 supports charging at 5 volts and a maximum current of 2 amps, which is basically 10 watts. And there is no support for any fast charging protocols such as Quick Charge. But at the same time, I've tested myself that Quest 2 can actually handle charging over 2.5 amps, and I'm here to tell you how to do it. First of all, we need to take care of a good charging cable. If you play standalone or use a wireless connection to your computer, you don't need to buy anything with fast data transfer. But we have to make sure that our cable will be able to handle current up to 3 amps. Very cheap cables usually can't take more than 2 amps and that's not enough for Quest 2 charging. Try to look for some thick cables with fast charging information on the box. They should usually be able to handle that much current or even more. You should be able to find some between 3 and 6 meters long for less than 10 maybe 15 dollars. You can also try connecting a short cable to a USB extension cable. But remember that it is less efficient and most of extension cables are very poor quality, so make sure you use a good one. Another important thing is our charger. As I mentioned before, Quest 2 does not support fast charging. But one particular feature of Quick Charge protocol allows us to charge unsupported devices faster than regular chargers. In short, when using a long cable to charge 5V device, the voltage at the end of the cable to which the device is connected will actually be lower than 5V, and the reason for this is the voltage drop related to resistance of the cable. To compensate for this lost voltage, Quick Charge uses slightly higher voltage, let's say 6V, so we still have a clean 5 volts at the end of the cable to charge our device. Simple, right? That is exactly why we should look for some fast charging adapters. Of course, there are many types, so it is worth focusing on one important parameter. We are looking for something with charging power of 15 watts or more, because then our charger should be able to deliver up to 3 amps of current at 5 volts. There is many chargers out there, 15, 20, 30 watts, so it shouldn't be hard to find one. But remember here, and don't buy the cheapest charger. They usually have a very unstable voltage that can damage your device. Try to stick to popular brands like Samsung, or even more cheaper Chinese alternatives like Anker, Ugreen, Basius, Xiaomi, and many more. Maybe your phone charger is enough for you, right? Just check the label on it and search for the output power. There is one issue with some adapters that can cause Quest 2 charging problem. Some chargers would not start charging again if the device has been fully charged with it before. Let's say that you have 99% of battery. It will charge it to 100 and stop. After that, even if the battery goes down, it won't start charging again unless you unplug the cable and plug it back in. This is very problematic for charging Quest 2 as well. So make sure that the charger you're using does not work that way. Just keep an eye on the charging icon in your device. Now a word about the link cable. It is a bit trickier here, because if you're connected to USB-A port 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, usually max you can get is 1 amp of current, and that's definitely not enough for Quest 2 charging. If you're connected to USB-C, you should be able to get between 1.5 and 3 amps, but it really depends on your motherboard manufacturer. There is only one solution here. You can find cables with two USB connectors on the PC side. One goes to the computer and the other to the charger. There are many brands selling these cables, and you should be able to get one for less than $40. But maybe you should just buy a better Wi-Fi router and switch to wireless PC VR instead. I really recommend it, but it's up to you. That's all for now. If you have any questions related to the video, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. See you soon in the future videos. Bye!